Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about configuring our inputs using our FuelTech Manager software. So when we want to wire in sensors, such as an oil pressure sensor or wideband sensor, we need to make sure that we, number one, know how to wire them correctly, and we also need to know how to configure them correctly in our software. Without having them configured properly, we'll find that the sensor is going to be reading inaccurately. And if we're using it for a tuning process, such as a wideband, it's going to make our tuning process all thrown off. So it's very important that we get this right. So I'm going to walk you through how to wire a sensor properly and how to go in and configure it properly in our software. So without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at setting up and configuring our inputs into our FuelTech controller. So right now I have an FT600 controller that I've wired in. I have it powered on to my vehicle, but I haven't went in and configured any inputs. We can take a look down here in the lower portion of our screen. We can see our engine temperature and intake air temperature. They're going to be reading a default 32 degrees. We'll find here that our wideband isn't reading. We'll see our map sensor is reading. It is going to have an internal built-in map sensor that we're able to utilize or we can wire an external map sensor. I'll show you how to do that. Um, we'll find here a throttle position is going to be zero and any other details or information, oil pressure, fuel pressure, these are all going to be zeroed out because it doesn't know what to do with the inputs that are coming in. So let's go in and configure some things here and go through how to could do this properly. We're going to go collapse our fuel tables here. We're going to go jump in here to our engine settings. And before we jump into our inputs, I want to go and point out that we do have this wire harness diagram available right here in our software. So we're going to find here on our B connector. And in this case, I have an FT600 controller. So I have a B, an A, and a B connector. So on my B connector here, I have a whole bunch of various inputs I can wire things into. In fact, I have here analog one all the way down here to analog 20. And we're going to find here that our strain gauge P and strain gauge N are going to be dedicated for our pins input 19 and 20, or pins 33 and 34, I should say. So inputs 19 and 20. We'll find that we're not able to wire anything into those inputs besides our strain gauge. So if we're not using a strain gauge, we're not going to be worrying about adding anything into our positions 33 and 34 on an FT600 controller. Now, if we're going in, um, and wiring in our sensors. We're going to be wiring them in through uh, inputs essentially 1 through 18. So we have all these other inputs. Anything with a white wire here is going to be an available input to our B connector on an FT600 controller. So depending on your controller, you might only have one connector here and you might be integrating some of these inputs here into just that single connector. So depending on what you have, you'll find that you have your wiring diagram available to you right here. So if you're wiring your sensors in, this will give you a nice reference point um, on where to wire them in. And you're going to have to make a list of what sensor is wired into what input. And then the next step here is going to be going in and actually configuring them in our input section. So let's go here and collapse our engine settings, jump into settings and calibration. We're going to move here into our input section. So we'll double click this. We're going to come into this window here. It's going to be giving us the ability to actually designate what that input pin is going to be. And 